All right, Ultimate Hoops Nation. This is uh, this week in Rack, the the championship edition. Uh, your Gorillas uh, beat the Rebels tonight. Uh, it's who you wanted to play. You beat them. How does it feel? Feels good. I mean, for us, you got to. I mean, you got to beat the best team to earn it. And you know, I always think that the Rebels are the best team. I, I think they set the bar, and they're the team that everybody strives to beat um, and to play like. So, uh, feels good. We we wouldn't have wanted to beat any other team for the title. So it's perfect. First half, uh, you know, pretty close game. I think you guys were up by by eight early. Uh, they came back. I think you guys were up by four at halftime. Uh, big stat there. Um, you got. I mean, just like I talked with Derek uh, earlier, um, you guys matched your defensive intensity, um, and to go along with that, you guys had less turnovers with them or less turnovers than them. I think you guys only had two turnovers in the first half. Kind of speak about your. What your thoughts were going Yeah, on. and that's exactly what we talked about. I brought it up at halftime, and that's the exact number that I came up with. Is that I think we only, tur only turned the ball over twice. And against the Rebels, I mean, historically, we're close to, you know, 15 to 20 turnovers a game. So it was huge for us to actually protect the ball. And doing that for 44 minutes is tough against Jan Jansen, DuPont, Ferber, I mean, and Cody. So <laughs> it was huge for us. That, that was our game plan. Come into the game, don't turn the ball over and clean up the glass. If we do those two things, we'll win. And it's exactly what we did, and we pulled it out. It got a little sketchy at the end, because it's Rebels basketball, they always make you think. Um, but yeah, it was, it was awesome to pull it out. So we, we kind of touched on Derek uh, last night. Uh, you know, he kinda had a, he's kind of had a cold season. Um, and, he, and he showed up big last night, uh, showed up big again tonight. Uh, got a chance to interview him. Here's that interview right now. All right, I'm here with uh, Derek Batiste. Uh, is this your second one? Actually, it's uh, it's my fourth. There's, there's two Wood, Woodbury, Woodbury. There's two Woodbury <laughs> championships people like to forget about, but uh, no, yeah, this is this is uh, the second real one. So, so uh, you guys beat the Rebels, I think, by what seven, eight? By maybe four, and with with free throws, it yeah got inflated a little bit, but yeah, it was it was a close game. So uh, throughout the season, you seemed like you, you kind of had a, a cold shooting streak. Um, you know, last night you hit some big shots. Uh, I think you finally came alive, and tonight, same thing. Um, is it the is it the competition? Is it the Rebels that gets you up, or or what? Um, no, I mean I didn't play very well against the Rebels on the Avengers. Um, had some stuff going on. This kind of got derailed in the middle of the season, um, but. When you got to turn it on, you got to turn it on. My teammates were relying on me. They were telling me I would be a difference maker. And the uh, the poor performance in the middle of the season kind of uh, let the or lulled the rebels to sleep. I think they didn't respect my shot. I hit my shots, and that turned out to be the difference. So it did. You, uh, I think it was tied at one point. You had a, a, a big three, and that's kind of what jump started your run. Um, your Avengers beat the rebels. Gorillas beat the Rebels. Is there a is there another team that you'd want to beat in the championship? No. <laughs> um, the thing the thing about the Rebels is uh, their style of play is is conducive to. Sorry, I can get close. I did this to read too. Um, the Rebels are a great team. It's can do their play style is conducive to to winning games no matter who they play, and it's all about intensity and playing defense and causing turnovers. That's gonna that's gonna beat any team. Um, the thing about it is that in in the previous era, that style of play was was going to beat 90% of the teams. The competition is significantly better now. Um, so you know the Rebels are perennial championship contenders. They always seem to make it. But once you get to the top, it's it's anybody's game at this stage in uh, in rec. So. Yeah, and I mean I think. You know, like teams like the Gorillas, uh, we saw the Squires when they beat them in the lead eight. You know, we saw them matching their matching their physicality. Um, you know, e even if it's somebody's got to, you know, take a foul just to, you know. Yep. yep. Um, uh, you guys, you guys matched the physicality today. Um, I think you guys played better defense. I think I think the turnovers at halftime, uh, they had six. I think you guys only had two, which yeah. is huge against the Rebels. That was a, that was the emphasis: limit turnovers and exceed their intensity and um, when you do that it just comes down to talent I think and I mean you say that like it's easy it's it's almost 
it's almost impossible to do, um, especially on a night in, night out basis. But for one game, you, uh, you're playing for everything. You know, if you do that, you got a good chance to win if your talent is better. I think we do have the more talented team. No disrespect to the Rebels, but um, we did what we needed to do and came out with a win. Well, congrats. Thanks, man. Oh. So kind of talk about Derek. Um, you talk about, you know, I don't know if it's, somebody talked about Jansen being a gamer. It might have been Helmy. Um, but, you know, I kind of, it was kind of Jansen versus Batiste early on. I think Derek had four threes throughout the game. I think Jansen had about the same. Uh, and then you, you match their, they're both awesome defensive players. Yeah, and Derek's very underrated defensively. And Derek's actually been really bad all season offensively for us. Something sparked him last game. I don't know whether it was he's he's lost his confidence, um, and he and he seemed to find it last night with a couple big shots, and you know the bench really kind of built him up, and he played completely different tonight. It's not about just making the shots. It's the fact that he attacked. He stayed aggressive. He didn't think about his shots, and any shooter knows as soon as you think about it, as soon as you hesitate, I mean you're the odds of that ball going in drop substantially so he pulled the trigger every time he touched the ball we yelled shoot it good shot just kind of kept him motivated whatever it was whether it was subconscious or not but he turned on a switch the last two nights and we wouldn't win without it so it was perfect yeah he had a big three I think it was 50 yep. 50 um, he had a big three and that kind of sparked your sparked your run um, second half uh, you know kind of the same thing uh, up and down um, it got within five. Uh, I think you guys were up by eight. Uh, there was a charge call on Marmol. Uh, Cody Hines comes down and hits the three. And at this point, I'm thinking, oh, crap, it's uh, last night all over again. Uh, but you guys held it together. Um, I think going down the stretch, uh, you know, your, your bigs and James Pinkett, you know, then he's not going to show much. He's not going to show up much in the box score, but he had, I think, two or three big steals and rebounds. Uh, down low, you had, you know, Ratty and uh, Helmy did a good job of keeping you know, Colby out of the paint. Yeah. And then he was doing a heck of a job just coming in and, and double teaming them and, and digging the ball out. Yeah, and, and, you know, we ration the minutes a little differently than we have all season. Uh, and Pinkett, whenever he comes in, you know what you're getting from Pinkett. I mean, I basically kind of gave the keys to success for our team, and with Pinkett, I, he knows exactly what to do. I don't have to tell him anything. Um, he wants it, so he's he's smart. He wants it. Um, you can trust him. He's not going to do anything stupid. And he comes in, and like you said, he crashes boards, picks up big steals, and he doesn't really force much. So he's an anybody that plays with Pinkett will appreciate his game and will say he's one of your favorite teammates. But it's not just what Pinkett did tonight. You know, Kyle had to bang with Ratty or with uh, Kloby most of the game. You know, Helmy, Helmy, you know, took it in the chin and, and sucked up some of the minutes no for, for the greater good of the greater good of the team. Yeah, and Noe, Noe's, Noe's the biggest competitor in the league. I mean, him and Dustin. There's a reason why they're the two best point guards. I mean, they grind out games and they don't want to lose. Um, Chris was aggressive. He picked his spots. He wasn't intimidated tonight. He usually is. It was awesome to see that. I mean, you look at what Derek did, obviously. Brian's been huge for us all season. He's been our best player in terms of what he needs to do for us in terms of scoring. Um, so it was a total team effort. And we were missing just a, that. Before Noe came on board, we didn't have the killer. You know, we didn't have that guy with that, you know, that jackass mentality. And Noe on the court, he's a, he's a prick. And that's exactly what you need to win. I mean, you can't have a bunch of nice guys. Um, and he brought that edge, and it, everybody feeds off of it. So, total team effort, and it was just great to pull it out against the Rebels, and kudos to them. I mean, it's so hard to beat them. So, uh, it's Helmy's first Gold Cup. I got a chance to interview him at Helmy. Here's that interview. All right, I'm uh, here with <laughs> I'm at Helmy. Uh, first Gold Cup, how does it feel? It's indescribable, to be honest with you. And I'd like to think that man right there is uh, one of my... Uh, one of the reasons why I have this thing, Derek, Izzy, Noe, Bryant, Big Fella Ready, Chris Maher, Pinkett, everybody worked so hard this season to win this thing. And it's so special because it's the Rebels, obviously. But it's my first one. Your first one's always a little more special, I'm sure, than the rest. 
I told Magnuson, I, I can't believe this is how it feels like. And uh, if I would have known that, I would have gotten like three of them by now. So I don't know, you know. So uh, going into the game, I mean, you guys have the size to match Colby and uh, and Ferber. Um, you, you guys did a good job of, of keeping Colby out of the lane, both you and Raddy. And uh, you guys did a good job of when they were throwing it in, you guys were digging and getting the ball out. Uh, was that the strategy going in to, to, to double with, with James and... Yeah, that was kind of part of the strategy. Initially, we were thinking of starting me and Ray together to match their size with Kloby and Ferber, but um, I, we had a strong, a strong offensive lineup that we finished the game with and started the game with, and we had mismatches all over the place with that team. So we didn't want to clog the lane a little bit with me and Raddy in there. So yeah, the game plan was to you know kind of clog it up for Kloby and kind of hope their shooters missed and. Jansen was lights out. Mm -hmm. Jansen's always lights out against the Gorillas. If you look at his stats, he's shooting like 10% all season, and then he ends up like 80% against the Gorillas, which is just kind of speaks to the volumes of he's a big ga big time gamer. You know, he shows up for big games. Um, but yeah, that was kind of long story short. That's kind of what we did. We kind of tried to double down low, make him shoot, and hopefully get the rebound and limit him to possessions. So now that you know how your, it feels, you're going for three more. Yeah, I'm going for three more. I'm going for the home run, the the Tiger Woods. Yeah, no, I'm stopping at four. I gotta leave some for other people, um, but it feels good, man. And uh, I'm probably six thousand dollars into this now, <laughs> but it's worth it now. It's worth every penny now. Right. Well, congrats, man. Thanks, buddy. So he said he's going for three more gold cups. I don't know why I didn't say four to make it, you know, five. But uh, we haven't had a team back to back win titles can uh, are the girls going to be back next season and can you guys do it yeah we'll be back i think everybody's coming back i don't no way no way's trying to make it work i know derek might miss maybe the first six seven weeks but uh we plan on having all you got to defend the title you got to try uh but winning back to back is so tough uh any there's six or seven teams that could knock us out any night with a B game, they don't even need to bring their A game as long as we don't bring it. So it's really hard to it's really hard to win a championship in this league, no matter how good your team is. And you know, before you almost died there. Um, before the playoffs, I had said that there's only a few teams that can win it: Rebels, Gorillas, and Good Goodfellas. And that's how it played out. And depending on who comes back next season, what the teams shape up to be, you know, we'll see. But winter is typically where the the fewest teams play, right? Or is it, I think or is it summer? More, yeah, oh, summer most teams play summer? Teams. So it'll be interesting. I think more teams play in the fall. Yeah. Okay, so here's the thing with that. If more teams come, that typically means more teams start to disintegrate and they, you know, I think the club are breaking up and then clubs coming down to Bloomington, they'll probably pluck a couple guys. So what happens is a good team will break off into two teams and their bench might get worse. So I think it might be easier with more teams because the talent at the top starts to, you know, dissipate just a little bit. So we'll see. But I don't. I mean, I, I hope we win. But Vegas, Vegas will have us pegged pretty high. But people shouldn't put their money on it. You, you, I mean, it's a long season. We'll grind it out and see if we can come back and, and repeat. Well, congrats. Thank you. Um, that's uh, that's it for this season. Well, uh, and Reed, Reed wasn't here. To interview me for the Rillas Cup. He was here for FOB, but not for the Rillas. So um, enjoy your Miami Dolphins game. So Reed is a diehard Miami Dolphins fan. He's never been to Miami in his life. He's as, he's as white as the snow. If he goes out into the sun, he'll turn into a lobster. And he decides that he's a Miami Dolphins fan, buys tickets, misses the Final Four and the championship game, and he's a national coordinator. And pretty much, you know, he is the heart and soul of this week in rec. And he decides to leave for championship week. He likes his Alan, <laughs> you got to promote Aaron. Reed's got to go. All right, guys, that's it. We'll uh, we'll see you next season.